The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And, ooh, yeah. That sound okay. Uh, welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, it doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at the appointed time. <clears throat> the following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, what do we have going on today? Uh, let's do this. Yeah, okay. Uh, hopefully, everything sounds good. Everything's doing well. We're working out are all the bugs and kinks in our new technology this week. And uh, so far, it's going fairly good. But, uh, as they say, no battle plan uh, survives first contact with the enemy. So we've had to dance around it this week. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, as far as the market, we've had a very good and successful test in the S&Ps. Uh, we needed a 4220, uh, yeah, 4222.50 to hold. Um, I re-entered the uh, uh, our long positions in the newsletter today. And again, this is very fast trading. It's not any, I had somebody asked this morning why I wouldn't go long in the newsletter for uh, investing. And that is, uh, if it's just going to be temporary, maybe a week or something, that's not investing, that's trading. Uh, so we continue to be bullish over kind of the next week, maybe into the Fed meeting, but that's about it. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in the market. Uh, nothing's changed on my, uh, on any of that stuff. Uh, not exactly sure where anything else has gone on, but it, uh, not on my end. It sounds perfect through the headphones. But, uh, what do we have? Oh, let's see if it goes here. Let's see. Uh, okay. Settings. Audio, video. Microphones. Uh, okay. well, all set correctly. Nothing's changed on this side. Um, but uh, I do digress. Let's do that and turn up that a little bit. Uh, so we can see, but uh, that's it. Um, oh, we want to go to things in the, I got slightly distracted. That's easy for me. Uh, we'll take these out of order, uh, cause I kind of added to them through the day. We continue to consolidate quite a bit in the market. Uh, and, uh, uh, we were looking for that for a little bit. Uh, let's see, where is that? Uh, is it here? Is it there? No. I've got stuff all over the place out here. Uh, right now, um, crude, uh, of course, continues its consolidation off the blow-off top. 106.76 uh, is back there. Uh, there's a uh, yeah, actually kind of uh, to the bottom of my list out here. We had the uh, Biden administration uh, coming to their let them eat cake moment. Uh, that is now getting a huge amount of backlash as to them doing zero about uh, the prices of fuel or next to nothing on the prices of fuel. And uh, the uh, uh, at least the people inside are thinking that uh, inside politics are thinking that uh, yeah, at this point, uh, if uh, we're going to have uh, uh, a party left, uh, they're after them to go ahead and at least start uh, doing some more uh, to relieve gas prices with more domestic drilling. And of course, we've got even the uh, very nice folks to the north of us uh, scratching their heads, asking them why they can't uh, import uh, or at least export more oil to the United States to lower prices uh, 
But uh, I think if there's a little bit going on here, uh, it is uh, that uh, the administration just who wants higher prices to drive their global warming agenda and uh, thinking that they'll get people off uh, crude, which I think is probably uh, a pipe dream. There just isn't enough lithium and batteries and all the other stuff to go on. We've talked about that before. But uh, wishing doesn't make it uh, happen. But I think that there's a bit of that. And uh, at least the rumor around Washington is that's going to change uh, quite a bit. We've got uh, some ECB back uh, 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 backlash from this morning. They were a bit more hawkish uh, in their tone, and that uh, really set up uh, the lower open. Um, we also have a TLT that just fell through the floor kind of on that. Um, amazingly, we've had an incredibly good 30-year bond auction, uh, but that didn't help uh, right now so much in the TLT. Um, we were a bit lower, and we kind of come off of that, um, mostly, I think, on that better bond auction. We were down to 133.72 for the low. We're at 134.37. But uh, as I've said for a while, we're headed to 128, and probably sooner rather than later. Uh, the Fed, uh, Congress, uh, Treasury, everybody and their dog wants to manipulate this uh, for a little bit, but it's not going to go that far. Uh, and see what else we have. We got that. We got that. Volumes are low in the pullback. Uh, I kind of uh, addressed on that uh, yesterday where we saw a lot of stocks came down. Um, those stocks, as I said, was the basis of trying to set some kind of low. Uh, today we had a pullback on what's going to be lighter volume most likely by the end of the day. So could we get uh, and continue a rally all the way in maybe to uh, the Fed meeting next uh, Wednesday? Maybe they're a little less uh, or more do uh, dovish, a little less hawkish on this. Um, generally, the reasons why the market starts going up are somewhat uh, vague and uh, murky before it and a lot of times i guess wrong you know it could be anything from uh the rumors of a ceasefire uh in uh, uh, uh the ukraine to a lot of other other things but as we just look at uh, at uh, what's going on in the market it is telling you something uh that is that we did have a blow off top on pretty much gold and crude uh gold's uh 2002 trying to hold 2000 for the day uh, but I think we could see at least uh, seven more days of winter. Uh, the uh, gold and the crude uh, musk that's not a muskrat. What is he? Not a hamster. Uh, groundhog. Groundhog come out. A um, little bit more winter out here as consolidation goes on. And that's probably going to apply to uh, the equity markets, too. But... Uh, very good tests out here for most everything, and uh, you know what? Um, could just have a few days of sunshine before what everybody believes is the end of the world comes. Uh, maybe eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Email me at pathtfn.com, and of course you can put a message in. There. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Is that better? Yeah, it's better for me anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do I have any history today? Nah, we did it yesterday. I don't think I had time to get it done. I had a bunch of other stuff going on before the show. So we're going to go right into questions, uh, which we have a few out here as we take a look at them. Uh, okay. Hey, David, I appreciate your call on the market turnaround. I uh, played it a bit different than you did well, Brent. Okay. Uh, good enough. Uh, what else do we have? Even if oil comes down to $60, $80 a barrel, big oil companies are still going to rake it in, aren't they? Uh, well, not, uh, not like they were in the last couple of days. Remember, these guys bought tankers. And it takes 20 days to get across uh, the uh, the ocean. And if they bought it 80 and sold yesterday or the day before at 130, uh, gonna be hard to duplicate that ever again. Are they gonna make more money than they did uh, a year ago? The answer is yes, but not as much money as they were uh, when crude was 130 bucks. Um, I think it can still go higher. I'm not saying that it's over. I'm just saying there's enough rumors out there. Uh, you had a blow off top. At best, you're looking for consolidation and for everything to calm down and everybody to quit talking about it every two, three minutes. Generally, almost all these giant uh, blow off tops are have a, a similar uh, way of uh, moving higher later. And that is they bore everybody to death. They make everybody think uh, that it's not going up, and it just goes sideways for a while. And then it starts its uh, move higher yet again. So it, are there still possible ones? Yes. Does a blow-off top uh, pretty much uh, tell you that it's not going to happen instantly uh, or in the next week? Eh, probably in the next week, in the next month. Eh, a lot of things can happen out there. Again, a river, uh, a really rumor-driven market out here. But today, a handful of things kind of pushing down uh, on that. Uh, again, um, I 
don't spend a lot of time watching CNBC. I do get some emails. And uh, I, one of the things I do look for is Santoli's uh, call on, or Santelli? Uh, his call on bond auctions. And he says it's the best it's ever been for the retail uh, investor uh, going to uh, bonds and uh, foreign uh, 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 folks doing it. And that generally is a good indication that they're throwing the baby out with the bath water at the lows, at least in the short term. Like I said, you can have some fairly strong uh, moves uh, in a bear market uh, that are back up and higher, uh, a lot higher than you ever thought, only to see them dashed once again. But uh, so far today, as we went through the stocks yesterday, maybe we'll go through the tail end of that uh, bunch of stocks that we went through. The volume has been kind of considerably low. Um, let's take a look at it. Uh, in the previous days, about this time, um, about uh, halfway through 2.30, we've been doing about 10 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape, if not 11 billion shares into uh, going into 18 billion. Well, we're at about 8.1. So is it infinitesimally low? The answer is no, but it's there. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, that's it. Okay. Um, so what do we, oh, we got a couple more questions out here. So, uh, who is this? Uh, Hector. Yeah. Um, are they going back to, to, uh, the lows from $40? Probably not anytime soon, but, uh, you know, we had a huge ramp. And those huge ramps seldom, if ever, uh, end up holding. You need a, a pace of consolidation, just like the pop yesterday in the uh, S&P. You're going to get pullbacks, and they're going to, especially in bear markets, are going to be uh, brutal to hold and almost impossible for you to think about buying. And I did buy before the show started. Uh, okay, what else? Uh, XLF, uh, extremely bullish. Um, well, you got to think uh, that the move uh, in bonds is probably fairly good for the financial sector. Um, you did gap down with the rest of the markets, but volume is fairly low. Uh, what you're probably going to take uh, to get uh, financials moving, I've got a 3x3 uh, three three displaced moving average up here, which I like. It's fairly close to a nine-day moving average if you're uh, a home gamer that does not have access uh, to displace moving averages. Uh, and let's see, what did I want here? I want the traditional moving average out here. There's not a whole lot of difference. It's just I like the displaced moving average as it gives you the numbers up front a lot more. Anyway, we're seeing uh, this move. What you want it to do, what you want is a couple more days of probably consolidation. And the next pop above that line is probably the buy signal on it. Uh, in the meantime, you probably have a lot of sideways action. And I'm wondering if it won't be something that the Fed says next week. Um, the one thing I'm hard uh, to, to uh, put a number on if we're handicapping the market is, what would, if we had a real ceasefire, what would that do to the S&P? 100 points, 150 points, 200 points, 50 points, depends on what you have. If you have an opinion, give me a call today, 877-927-6648. Okay, and he says, I uh, uh, ended my stream, didn't want to do that. I don't know why it did that. Uh, again, we're getting used to this. Hopefully, yo, know, stream's back up and running uh, for you folks in the engineering room. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, no real clear buy signal out here yet in the financials, but I got to think uh, that if there's one that's probably going to do good over the next year with four uh, rate hikes probably baked in to the year, it's going to be financials. Uh, okay, so got that. Uh, Apple is being taken to the woodshed. I think the biggest problem here is they did release a uh, new product. Um, options are still rather bullish for next week. 
uh, with a high indication that this goes to 165. So you're not going to retire on any movement that Apple has, but it's held pretty much straight through the day. Uh, the problem with Apple is they delivered a lot of stuff that no one cared about. Um, and they're making a lot of hay in the tech sector for their new high-powered uh, video production. I'm going to call it video production uh, machine, which is in reality going to cost somebody 10 or 12 grand. So you're probably not going to sell a lot of those to uh, it's uh, more for people that uh, have big YouTube channels, maybe in CNN or the you know, Fox thing. Uh, they're putting a lot of content and need it up very quickly on a system. So cool, but uh, eh, who cares? We'll be back. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. We'll uh, continue uh, talking about uh, what we have here in Apple. And it, it so, you know, why is it doing poorly? Everybody was hoping that they'd come up with some kind of new iPhone that someone would pay 1500 bucks a piece for. Uh, coming up with a $10,000 computer that may be very impressive it has a very narrow market. And, yeah, they, uh, they're right now um, addressing more memory than anybody else and doing all this other stuff. 
But at that point, you start looking at uh, going to the cloud and an individual PC like that that's high and expensive uh, compared to a server that can do the same thing. Uh, people would probably or generally like to have the server more. So a very interesting product, um, very brown, uh, groundbreaking and a very narrow market compared to all the other stuff. Um, the new uh, inexpensive phones and stuff, uh, they're not happy about that. They think that'll bring overall margins down. So uh, kind of a, the dog and pony was a disappointment to them. So we have that. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Jeepster out here. It says, uh, when would you think about buying a long position in Micron? Um, the semis, uh, as we said yesterday, still hadn't gotten a, a really good signal. And one of the things with Micron, uh, along with some of the others, is that they did have more volume uh, than the previous low. On January 28th, you had to see, am I still? Okay, stream is still running. Um, you had, uh, what did you have? You had 26 million shares on the 7th, and you bounced a little. Today you got, well, you know what? It is not so bad. You probably want to close, uh, what do you have now, 75.39. You need to close over 75.52, which is not that far away. Um, depends on how the volume comes in. I'm just thinking maybe some of these need more time to consolidate. If there's a word uh, that could be uh, underused right now is probably consolidation in the markets after all these big moves. Everybody just thinks that it's going to big swings are going to continue infinitum. Uh, I'm not one of those folks. I think uh, we could find uh, narrowing trading ranges for a while. But uh, on the S&P, I do think that it's going to resolve itself higher. And uh, that's probably only for a very short amount of time as we uh, do that. So um, I don't see anything out here. Let's take a look at the SMHs and see if there's anything else out there. Everybody's still worried uh, fairly strongly about um, uh, an invasion by China. Uh, and again, you had uh, too much volume on March 8th in the SMHs. You had uh, 13 million shares. That's got to get retested again. So I'm thinking the S uh, uh, the S and P's spies are probably going to be the first really to start moving higher through the next week. And it may take Monday or Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday of next week for the SMHs to bottom out uh, and some of the other tech sector. So still way too much uh, risk on the thought that China may invade, I think. That is what the market is thinking. But uh, at least the charts are telling us the same thing. Um, maybe there's a different reason that I've missed, but uh, still a little weak out there. As I said, the XLF, probably a better bet right now, I suspect. As you know, interest rates are going higher. Let's take a look at the TLT. Kind of looked at that uh, before. But uh, if there's something you really should be watching out here is that. The one uh, bright spot on the TLT is lighter volume. So you may have a temporary rest spot out here on the test of February 16th, 134.51, 43 million shares. With just 20 million shares, you really need to close above uh, 341.51, and you're underneath that. Maybe you get back up there. Uh, energy was really too much on the way down, so I'm not expecting uh, this thing to run back up to the top. Maybe you could get up. 136, 137s, and then start moving down. But I, I suspect by the end of March, we're back down into the 128 area. Um, again, they'll move this and kajigger it and do everything they can. Uh, but you know it's, uh, as we say, the Otis indicator from Mayberry RFD. Uh, Otis knew uh, where the keys were to the drunk tank. Um, he may be all over town. Uh, but eventually he's going to find his, self in, his way into the cell and lock himself up uh, by midnight. And uh, certainly and what we have here is uh, kind of the drunkard's walk. Otis is my take on that thought, but that's it. Uh, we're going to go to somebody here as soon as they tell me. We're going to go to John in Philly. How are you doing today, John? 
David, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. Go ahead. Oh, very good. Give me good. a full report. Yes, no, I am calling in specific uh, about uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. Okay. Uh, I've done so because I was listening to your program and you were just speaking of the semiconductor business. Um, before I ask the question on TSM, uh, I just make an observation on highly valued stocks. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a stock that I've known very well. Uh, going back to late 2018, frankly, thanks to you, that's DocuSign. Uh, you were the one in the fourth quarter of uh, 18 who uh, went through a uh, fairly extensive business description of two that I recall, interestingly enough, DocuSign and Avalara. And uh, interestingly enough, since I was fully prepared with knowledge of the business and have seen the IPO uh, share sale digested in 18, of course, I was totally asleep at the switch and failed to buy those December 18, January 19. Uh, DocuSign rallied, you know, were more than a double and a triple and then kept going. And I did do some trading uh, or I held those shares probably no more than like six weeks intervals uh, before the, the actual top came in place. And uh, the observation is now the stock is down, what, 70 percent or what have you. And you hear the uh, you hear the old story. Boy, this business is great. It's growing like a weed. That all is true. But what people fail to um, take into account when DocuSign peaked price wise, it was trading at something like 35 times next year's sales. In other words, the valuation was had no bearing on you know any reality looking on the big picture longer term. And DocuSign is a great company and it's growing like a weed. That's all true, but from those highs because of that high valuation, you know the stock's down, whatever it is, 70 uh, percent. So as I'm thinking of highly valued stocks, just thinking of DocuSign as just an example, I wonder. Is Taiwan Semiconductor, could that go down another 50% and end up being a pattern that looks very much like Alibaba? You know. We'll be back in just a minute with the answer to that. Hold on uh, through the break, John. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. As we return, is John still on the line? I am, David. Looking for okay. your answers, sir. Thank you. Good enough. Um, here's the question. Here's a couple of things. I was going to talk about it earlier, and I didn't do much with it. And that's uh, xenon uh, gas for the lasers uh, that etched the uh, chips at Taiwan Semi. Um, a lot of people have been talking that up. Probably not as big an issue as a lot of people think. Um, everybody else is just scared to death that uh, China will follow uh, them. But uh, I don't know. How do you price a monopoly? Because they certainly have it. They can charge whatever they want. The only thing is maybe they get a little bit more business to some of the other competitors or would-be competitors. But everybody's five years behind them. So what is a company like that worth? Uh, in the hands of uh, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley traders, I'm thinking Citadel traders, are, it's probably worth, you know, 105 to 145. Yeah. If it's the hand, in the hands of the traders who work for uh, Premier Z, I wonder if it would be that level or be something else. Yeah, I don't know how you handicap uh, an invasion, right? Um, the only thing that holds them back is that. Um, you know, there are, are there some gaps in uh, in in uh, the pipeline for uh, production? A few of them, but for the most part, they've done very well on that. Uh, the xenon gas is probably the biggest thing they face right now. Um, that went from $3 a liter to about $9 a liter and adds about two cents to every chip that they make on the high end. So is it a it, the bigger thing is just getting it. Um, they used to just, uh, after it would been used for two weeks, they would just, uh, they would just uh, the, let it evacuate into the air because it's a noble gas, no big deal. Uh, now they're actually recycling it. There's machines that do. Uh, and some places actually did recycle it and had uh, underneath the production floor had a recycling center for the xenon gas and the lasers. But uh, these, uh, I'm trying to remember, Exomer uh, lasers that used, uh, C, uh, used a variety of gases, but uh, the one that's tough is uh, xenon because that all came from a giant plant or two in the Ukraine. That's why everybody's wigged out about that. But, you know, $3 a liter to $9 a liter for something that you change every two weeks is not, I think, the story out here. So I've got to put it, chalk it up to uh, thoughts of invasion. Um, business hasn't changed. They're running at 100% capacity. So, you know, it, it's, it's that. They've got a high volume uh, 145 high at uh, with 52 million shares. If uh, we could get to the point where we th think that the Chinese have learned 
that the whole world would turn against them like uh, the Ru- uh, the Russians did, uh, or turned against the Russians. Maybe that changes something, but I think that's going to take some time. I still think it's uh, a monopoly, and monopolies can charge whatever they want. David, so, thanks, thanks so much for all those uh, those thoughts. Do appreciate that. I just um, yeah, I don't know how you handicap invasion. So yeah, that, I, uh, that's my. I struggle with that as well. Uh, okay. In uh, in parting, I wanted to just pose a question. Certainly not something I'd expect any response to right at this minute but food for thought to think about. I'm struggling with what I think is an important issue and a question. Uh, here it is. And when you talked about the the, uh, the price decline, the abrupt price decline the past oh, five trading days in TLT, uh, it raised this issue in my mind. David, I make this observation. Um, starting back last summer, as inflation, as inflation pressures were proving not to be transitory, the yield on the short-term dated U.S. Treasuries, specifically like the one-year, the two-year types, you know, uh, uh, increased dramatically. <clears throat> and they've, they've uh, come up, and let's just forget about Russia, Ukraine, and what have you, that issue. Those rates have moved up dramatically. In spite of that, the, uh, the Federal Reserve's <clears throat> reverse repo program, you know, which has been in place now for, what, 18 months, 24, whatever, still holds balances, what, close to $2 trillion or something? And the question I, that's nagging at me is this. Those reverse repo balances are um, uh, uh, pay out a positive a, excuse me, a tiny, albeit positive, interest rate to the, those market participants, banks and funds and all that jazz who use the reverse repo facility. Um, those players who use that, you would think, had every financial incentive, you know, starting like last Labor Day into Christmas and the start of this new year, to swap out of that and go into one- and two-year treasuries, because you could get, you know, 1% at 1.5, whatever the number, something huge relative to the uh, tiny, albeit positive, reverse repo yield. The fact that that financial incentive has not drawn that money out of those reverse repo balances is a huge um, question for me. I'm saying, okay, the financial incentive, while huge, isn't persuading that move. Why? What's this all about? Uh, I can't help but think it's massively important. If you ever come up with an idea on that, I'd just be uh, dying to hear it. So thanks, for, thanks very much for your time, David. You bet. As we uh, wrap up this segment, which uh, pretty much takes us into the last two-minute warning before the end of the show, after the next commercial break, um, you just have a look at it. But, you know, and I see everybody buying bonds as they did today, the 30 years and stuff. Um, it reminds me of a movie that is turning 50 years old uh, here next week, and I'll celebrate it. But, of course, it's The Godfather. Uh, a lot of wisdom in the movie. Uh, not generally uh, stuff you find, but... Uh, I do find that, uh, you know, I I refer to a lot of stuff from that movie. And uh, to me, the Bond moves and some of the stuff that we've seen over the last couple of days is uh, going to the mattresses when they all had to uh, have a a war and sort everything out. We've got kind of that now. But generally, I'm a big fan of uh, buying when everybody's saying the end of the world is nigh. I think says there's at least some areas that are pretty good. I'm more on the S&P side first. Maybe the NASDAQ starts picking up uh, sooner rather than later. But I'm thinking maybe it's going to follow a day or two or three uh, into next week. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it is a ceasefire. Maybe it's uh, 20 other things that, that could get better in the market for just a short period of time to make everybody still think uh, the market could go higher. I'm not uh, incredibly bullish, but uh, I think in the very short term, we could uh, see higher prices. 
We'll be back after this and wrap up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. <laughs> Uh, yes, a lot of comments uh, in the emails about uh, God, the Godfather movie. And yeah, 50 years old. They're making a making of the Godfather that's going to be, I think, some series. I didn't catch where. But I always love this part uh, that I think is from the Godfather, too. Michael, we're bigger than U.S. Steel. Uh, for some reason, that one always... Uh, stuck with me out there, but I love it. Um, anyway, eh, what else do we have out here? Okay. Um, let's do this. Let me get uh, a few of these things out of the way here so I can start talking. Uh, dollar index is pretty close to the highs, $98 and let's call it 98.50. It's within two one thousandths of a, uh, uh, of the high out here, kind of bouncing around. Uh, when we go and start looking at some of the other ones, uh, like uh, gold, it's kind of fighting to hold 2,000 here today. Again, 
Yeah, consolidation, maybe 1975, maybe 1950. I'd love to see everybody say that it's the end of the thing and it was a false breakout and be despondent. Maybe I don't get that, but generally if I get just the absolute worst, is a good time to buy after a bounce in gold. It's a real heartbreaker of a trade generally. And uh, lastly, when we look at uh, crude out here, of course, uh, up uh, at 130 now down to 106.28. And, uh, you know, if you just look at it for a little while out here, it's back through the lows of uh, to, to, to the, what is about yesterday evening. So, yeah, I think you could get uh, 100 bucks pretty easy. I think there's that in it over the next couple of days. Um, just give it some time if you want to be long some of these things. They just need to consolidate out. And uh, I think we've got kind of a week where maybe uh, maybe the equities are back in play. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll be back here tomorrow like Arthur into the Philippines. We'll be back.